All right, let's get down to business. We have an uh, air gap before what's ostensibly the final episode, where Devin's going to confront Aisha. Let's see what the hell's going on in Thane's final episode. House Edge. God damn it. Why could timing never work out in my favor? That probably wasn't fair. I was likely experiencing survivorship bias in action. If I were to take a hard look at everything up until this point, you'd probably find that I looked out a number of times. Then again, I know you'd just find as many times where random happenstance had screwed me over. So I think I'm permitted a bit of grumbling. Normally I could make time for keeping up the Thane Act. I had done so up until now. With surprising ease, in fact. It hadn't really been interfered with my other activities yet. But this was different. Today was important. I needed to be somewhere, and in all likelihood I had to be there soon. So of course, now when I had a strict deadline, he would call me over for an official Duat business discussion. Three guesses as to what it was about. Again, the temptation to, to just ditch was present. But at the same time, I still need to appear as Thane one more time for things to work out. I guess this would have to be that time. Normally I'd be excited for the opportunity. It had come about naturally, but not now. Not today. I shook my head. Oh well. I had to play the cards dealt. I just get in, have the conversation, get out. With that assurance made, I entered the V-Hall. Thane. Is the password really necessary every time? It's exceedingly annoying. Ah, well, you know, policy and all. Thug trailed off. Fine, speak the dead, yada yada. Without finishing the quote, I just walked on through. I thought I might run into a bit of resistance on this. I thought wrong. So was the power of Thane. To be honest, I should have been abusing this a bit more in the past. Oh well. Might as well still make the most of it while I had it. As I entered the V-Hall, I noticed it being vis visibly more crowded than usual. What was this about? What's all this, then? There wasn't an official meeting of any sort going on. A bit more observation, however, I came to a realization about the current state of things. This was a party. Or half of one, anyways. Party might have been too strong. But definitely a celebration. Lara had a lot of her supporters here to cheer on her triumphant return. Having successfully pilfered a boatload of cash from Olympo. Given the tone of everything, I had to assume that... That went well with Marduk. At the same time, I also saw a number of Yi supporters around. Is this the end result of Lara and, uh... Eris? A smaller number to be sure, but definitely people who I wouldn't page coming around to celebrate Lara. If I had to guess, that was all, this was Yi also rallying the troops. For whatever reason, I could think of a few, Yi decided it wasn't a good idea to have the place packed with Lara supporters while he was on his lonesome. Hmm. Given recent events, I couldn't imagine Yi was feeling good. As I noticed him making his way over to me, I confirmed that theory. His expression was restrained. He was good at that. Probably would be poor optics if, if he went around scowling that the Duats had made a ton of cash. But I had been around Yi long enough at this point to tell. He was pissed. With that angry emotion bottled in his heart, he made his way over to me, the person who had freed Lara. Great. Bane? Yi? What's the occasion? Oh, did you not hear? Lara was able to sign away her claim to the inheritance for a lot of money. The dwarves are now a significantly b significant bit richer. Marduk is happy, and Lara's supporters are here celebrating. Oh. Oh, indeed. That's not good. Acute observation, Thane. I can always count on you for accurate color commentary. He reached into his pocket, and found a cigarette and lit it. After a long inhale, he shook his head. Things are bad, Thane. Quite bad. We're approaching end times. Time destroys the false opinions, but he confirms judgments of nature. Know that one? I thought for a bit. Then I just shook my head. Marcus Tullius Cicero. Nice little piece of comfort, most of the time. Most of the time? This outcome itself might be the effect of time. False opinions being destroyed. Nature's judgment. What are you saying? 
He shrugged. Perhaps this is for the best. You can't be serious. After everything, this is how, this is how you react. Yes, Thane. After everything. So many things. I'm starting to feel old. We've done so much to make sure that Walara winds up the loser. Even after an opportunity fell into our laps, we're still ending up a day late and a dollar short. At some point, you have to wonder... What if, it's, what if that's the point? You can't be saying what I think you're saying. Rousseau had a point, you know. All forms of governance, gangs included, derive their sovereignty from the consent of the governed. majority of Duarte members hold Lara in a positive light, then perhaps, regardless of actual qualifications, that grants her moral authority. Moral authority. The winner is right. It's the mandate of heaven. We could both run around, tiring ourselves out, trying to cling on to something we never truly had. Or we could face facts, understand the shifting sides, and properly orient ourselves for a Duarte life under Lara. This is a much different ye than me encountered in the last episode of uh, Bells' story. He finished his cigarette, then he tossed it into the ground and smooshed it with a foot. Fuck that. Yeah, no fucking way is that happening. I choose death before kowtowing to that bitch. Lars a dipshit and so's Rousseau and Locke. Democracy's got nothing to do with being a good leader. Common opinion leads to common denominator opinions. Do what headship should fall to whoever deserves it the most. That's one of us, and we'll prove it here and now. But you got that out of your system? It's weird seeing you like that. He shrugged. What can I say? I'm a strong proponent of, free, of frequent self-introspection. It's the only way to truly know where you stand. I just nodded at this, not fully getting what he meant. Jeez. You know, after I said all that, it's not like I've got a good idea on how to actually go about changing things. You were so close. So fucking close. And Laura tied up and everything. You'd think Mordek would have gone for killing her then and there. It felt like that's where he was leaning before the lights went out. I'm entirely sure that had large state put, this matter would be behind us. True, true. Tell me, how did Laura get out of that again? He was looking at he was looking at me, a bit of edge in her eyes. In his eyes. I was hoping not to not re relitigate this. There. It's true, I had left myself an out when freeing Lara. Plausible deniability. Gave my story back after Lara escaped. People believed it well enough. It was definitely a little odd. He was pretty sharp. Maybe it was paranoia talking, but I was worried he might have had an inkling that something was wrong with this. I already told you. Several times. I know, I know. Indulge me. I feel I do so too often. But fine, it's not as though there's much to tell. One of Laura's supporters went off and cut the power, creating a temporary darkness. Laura used this opportunity to cut her ropes with some bladed instrument she had hidden on her. Knife, perhaps. As she got free, she swung wildly, hitting Zouchi in the gut, and she ran for the door. As I was very close to her when she broke free, I gave chase. It was right behind her. She remained slightly out of reach. Even once she got outside, I wasn't able to catch up to her. Eventually, I had no choice but to let her get away. See, see, that's the bit that always trips me up. Sure, Chad told me... Told me that from what he could see, you were right next to her by the time you got to the door. Why did she put so much distance on you? You're a pretty athletic dude, if I do say so myself. It feels weird that Lara, of all people, could outrun you. When will you quit underestimating her? She's a threat. Yeah, but a physical one. I don't know what to say. She's just, she's just got a better sprint than I gave her credit for. His arms are crossed. You can tell by his glare that he suspected something. I don't know what. I think he didn't know what either. But he smelt blood in the water, as he had done a number of times with that within our interactions. Under the circumstances, this could be a problem. However, it seemed as though Yi would forcibly dismiss this cloud of suspicion. It's not like he had much of a choice otherwise. 
and he couldn't fathom a reason as to why I would be lying about this. So in the end, he decided to let it go. Yeah, yeah. Don't mean to blame you, just frustrated. Believe me, nobody is more frustrated at me than myself. I can imagine. Anyways, on the plus side, at least we get to see Marduk in a bit of action again. Punishing those supporters who cut the lights. Boy, was that a real show. Real show, all right. Thought I might get sick. Still, I had to stay around. Didn't want one of them ratting me out. Indeed, it looked like at one point one of them was going to mention my involvement. A single finger of mine put to my mask took care of that. He sure has a penchant for torture. Hmm. Ah, well. Point is, at least there's, that's a bit of a morale hit for the Lara side. Who knows what would have happened if to them it had Lara not proven herself with the whole or breaking a ton of cash thing. Nothing pleasant, I can imagine. Yep. Ah, but then Lara had to go and throw a wrench in our plans. Classic Lara. Classic Lara moments, right? Is it? Is it not? When you say Lara throwing a wrench in our plans is classic Lara, it makes it sound like she throws a wrench in our most of our plans. That is to say that we're incompetent. Well, damn. You've got me there. Okay, point is, somehow Lara fleeced a ton of, fleeced a ton of cash for the Dacemus. Don't ask me how she did that. It was totally out of her wheelhouse, but whatever. Somehow she made it happen. And somehow she made Art call off the hit. He doesn't seem particularly happy about any of this, but not tactfully angry. That's a win for Lara. I just nodded. Honestly, though, I don't give a shit how Art feels. Neither does anyone else. The problem's Marduk. He seems thoroughly impressed by how Lara handled the situation in all respects. I mean, the biggest mark against her was her inability to bring in cash. Now she's brought in cash. And that gets kind of bullshit, because it's not like you can count on being willed by a ton of shares by a bazillionaire as a reliable source of income. But Marduk tends to gloss over details like that. He just sees money and likes it. Real irritating. Marduk often fails to see the bigger picture. Jeez, you're telling me. And you know what's worse? I was talking with Lara earlier. The way she was talking. It sounds like she knows what we've been doing with the man, Jet. Seriously. I mean, she didn't make it explicit. The in the, the in but the implication was there. She doesn't know anything. We've been careful. Yeah, but we've been thorough. This many trips out, it's plausible she could have caught on. It doesn't take a detective, after all. I shook my head. Still, I don't believe she knows. After all, if she had such definitive knowledge, she definitely would have gone to Marduk sooner. That's just too big an accusation. You considered this. You got a point. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you might be right about that. Aha, the logic that would serve to get, uh... Lara killed. Is it soon enough? At the very least, she definitely doesn't have any hard evidence. That's usually what would matter. Usually? He shot a glance back at Marduk's office. Marduk's a fickle son of a bitch. Forgetful, too. Forgetful of loyalty. Right now, Lara's in Marduk's good graces. Being in his good graces, Lara's word is bound to hold a lot more weight. Even if she just has a vague suspicion in this state, that might be enough to sway things. That can't be right. I'd hope not. But that's not what my instincts are telling me. Then we just deny. We hold the line together. It's two versus one. With no evidence, she's not going to be able. To, she's not going to be able to do anything. Hmm. I wish I had your confidence, Thane. But if Marduk swayed by Lara, as he's wont to do, then he could order a, order a more official investigation. Look into disappearance time. Scan the ship for forensic evidence. We covered our traces, but only so well. Things could go bad. I had no response to that. He groaned. Even putting aside that, Lara's now going to get a real lead in the race for the headship. Marduk could go any day, and he knows that. He might make some sort of declaration any second now. Feels like, if we look, feels like if we look down, we'll see the bottom of the cliff. Right now we're holding on desperately to a rope, trying not to fall. Every second it holds our weight, the rope begins to fray. 
Only a matter of time before it gives way and snaps. Perhaps. In that case, we may need to let go of the rope. And commit suicide. And jump to a nearby bluff. Ah yes, of course. The natural conclusion to this. Ah, I see. Alright then. What's this bluff you're thinking of? Oh hey, looking at look at that. Double meaning. Very clever. Did you think of that ahead of time? No, that just sort of happened. It's not particularly relevant because what I'm suggesting is no bluff. Oh. Oh? I know, let me be clear. I'm very happy if you came up with a good idea. Just uh, a bit sad because, you know, it would have been quite clever if it was a bluff you, su you were suggesting. Well, I apologize for not making a suitably, suitably clever metaphor. Can I resume explaining the plan that will save our asses? Right, right, sorry for deal. Sorry for derailing. Simple. Made it abundantly clear why Lara is currently in good graces. She has made a lot of money. Is this the source of the, uh... Well, Lara isn't the money maker. You are. You just need to prove that in a big gesture. Okay, I like it, I love it. Any details? Our stash house. The place we keep all of our dirty money. Have one of your guys set up a scene there. Hmm. It's currently being guarded by some of Lara's people. That's good. Make whatever happens look like their fault. I don't know and I don't care about methods. You're the detail-oriented one. You mess with that. What I'm suggesting is that you do something that causes the police to investigate the scene. Then you get your contact set to discover the stash of dirty money. Have them do it discreetly in a way that won't be a big deal. If the Duat members get wind that it was your contact who discovered the cash, they'll realize you were behind the whole enterprise. Anyways, once all the Duat's dirty money is discovered, have your police contact be in charge of transporting the money to a more secure location. Have him choose the route. And along the route he chooses, set up an ambush for the armored car. If you know when and where a truck like that is going to be set up, it doesn't take a lot to hold a successful ambush. Doubly so if the person driving the truck is in on it. In this ambush, you steal back and recover all the cash. Your contact will probably be disciplined for getting held up like that, but they'll also have found the money in the first place, so he should be fine. Then you, then you, then you deliver all the cash back to the Duats. One move, you basically transfer the credit of all the cash, including the money Lara brought in, to you. I'll firmly establish how necessary you are to the Duats. That you're more necessary than Lara. If you can make that clear, then if you make it where if Lara becomes the head you walk, Mardu can appoint her head. Simple. I was talking far more than I should have Thane. But I needed ye I needed ye to go for the plan. The whole time while I explained it to him, he just watched me in silence. I had trouble reading his expression. After I finished explaining, there was a moment of silence. Come on. Go for it, Yi. Do the plan. You know you want to. Finally, he spoke up. Huh. Interesting idea, Thane. I wouldn't have expected something like this from you. I gotta say, it's pretty risky. If it goes wrong, if it comes out that I'm responsible, I'm going to be in a whole heap of trouble. A type you can't recover from. It's certainly a dangerous play. He, sh he shifted back and forth, as though physically weighing his options. Finally, a smile passed across his face. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm not really much of a gambler. But I'm sure as hell a soldier. Any good soldier knows that sometimes there are battles you've got to fight. Right now, the war between us and Lara is up in the air. This is the sort of critical strike that's needed to shift the tides. Good thinking, Thane. Thank God. E, for fuck's sake, why did you have to always have to give me a minor heart attack every time we talked? Just accept the plan earlier next time. Regardless, it seemed like he was on board. Good. Coming here wasn't a waste after all. Thank you. To be honest, I wasn't sure if it was that good an idea. 
just it was just the best one I had. No, no, it's a pretty smart idea, all things considered. Could use a bit of refinement. Don't worry, that's what I'm for. This plan's pretty smart. With it, but with this atmosphere, I'm worried. Marduk, Marduk might make a decision any minute, honestly. So I say we get this plan rolling into action ASAP. I'm gonna get go get. I'm gonna go start gathering up people we can use for this. Tell them what's up. That sounds good. He looked like he was about to turn around and walk away. However, we both paused. Approaching us now was none other than was none other than Lara herself. Sadly, surprisingly, she was not followed by any of her posse. But all the same, she wore an unmistakable smug smile. Perhaps justifiably so. He grumbled under his breath. However, he stayed put as Lara approached. Hey, guys. How's it going? Having fun over here by yourselves? Oh, just boatloads. Isn't that right, Thane? Indeed. I'm just raising the roof. Lara actually the Lara actually the actually let out a chuckle at this. Yeah, I'm definitely setting a getting a festive mood from you two. Good to hear, good to hear. Okay, look, I'll just address the elephant in the room. I am sorry, Lara. Oh? What for? You don't know. Nothing comes to mind, no? In that case I take it back. Nothing to apologize for. Wow, okay. He's sorry for try tying you up and trying to have you killed. Oh, that! I knew I was forgetting something. As was I. Thane's right, I am sorry for that. Totally unprofessional of me. Real dick move on my part. Just, you know, Art said so. You understand. I definitely do. Water to the bridge. I'm sure if our, posi if our positions were reversed, I'd have, I would have done just the same thing. As am I. I shifted around uncomfortably. In reality, I wasn't all that uncomfortable with tense atmospheres and false smiles, but Thane certainly was. Let's not linger on such gloomy subjects. This should be a fun time, a celebratory time. After all, I made the Duarts a bunch of money in one fell swoop. That means bonuses for everyone. Who could possibly not be excited about that? Not me, that's for sure. I'm indifferent. Oh? I don't do it for the money. Not right. That isn't. This guy just thinks saying, saying things like that make him sound cool. Oh, I see. Well, he's right about that. You're very cool, Thane. I feel patronized. Although I chuckled again. You should. Ah, uh, anyways. I know I'm, a, I'm in a good mood. Marduk was really happy when I brought in all that cash. A lot of nice things to say about me. Who knows? Might even make me the next day of the Duats. Wow, someone was making things a lot more explicit. Just rubbing our faces in it, aren't is she? Bold move. Look to see how Yi would respond. That right. Good for you. Did he say that? In but so many words. So he didn't. Little thing called subtlety, Yi. I know it's not your strong suit. After all, you like to solve your problems with the end of a gun. Hmm. Well, nice to know Marduk is happy. But I wouldn't rest on your laurels for too long, Lar. You never know what might happen. This industry proportions could get reversed in a couple of months and a couple of minutes. What's that supposed to mean? Tensions, tensions were steadily rising in this conversation, and I was looking for an out. Luckily, I got one. Which is not the type I was looking for. Fang walked out of Marduk's office. Then he called out. Hey, Thane. Marduk wants to talk to you. In private. Oh, would you look, oh, would you look at that? Thane, it appears as if you're wanted. Ooh, someone's in trouble. What are you, in grade school? I know you are, but what am I? That doesn't work in this context. Makes it made you mad, right? Seems to me it worked well enough. As the two squabbled amongst each other, I was just biting my tongue. Fucking serious. What now? What it really had to call me over now of all the, of all times. Alone. Give me a break. I didn't want to attend this meeting for a number of reasons. Thank had made that announcement publicly. If I didn't start heading over to this office now, people would get suspicious. I couldn't afford that. There were more duats than ever. Only option was to go and have this meeting with Marduk. 
I pray that nothing happened in there that would have him calling out to the minor army standing out around, standing around here. After a couple of deep breaths, I started walking over to Marduk's office at a steady rate. No need to panic. Why well, was Thane, a fearless robot? But with Marduk every now and then. Nothing weird about this. Before I knew it, I found myself entering the office I had only stepped foot in once before now. It was once, was it? All right, Marduk. This time I didn't have Yi and Laura to act as buffers. And just sitting there, Marduk proved to be an intensely imposing figure. I'm starting to get a feeling of what this might be. Him covering, but well, no surprise there, I suppose. I had already seen him in his natural state like this. Only last time I had buffers. No such luck this time. I have to stare down Marduk all on my own. That was fine. I just emulate Thane perfectly. I had a good download on him by now. Instead of saying anything to me as I entered, Marduk just nodded at me. I nodded back. Sit. He didn't need to tell me twice. Walked forward, circled around the couch, and sat down. So, Thane. Marduk. It's been a while since we've had a conversation. That's not true. We talked not too long ago in this very room. We had a private conversation, jackass. It's been too long since we've talked one-on-one. -on -one. I shrugged. Sorry. You've just been keeping me busy with Duot work. I remember the last time I gave you a direct order. It was a while ago. You've been keeping me busy by Yi's command. Marduk nodded to this. Apparently, in his eyes, this was an acceptable answer. Still, that's not a complete excuse. You have my private number, after all. Oh shit, I do? Well, a phone to call me on. Marduk's words confirmed a theory I had had for a while. The old bastard referred to, to, referred to on Thane's spare phone like he was Marduk. The answer was kind of obvious from the beginning. I guess I was just overthinking things. Then again, this raised another question. But it was one I pretty sure I was pretty sure I had an answer for. True. Well, then I guess there just hasn't been much to talk to you about. You keep yourself busy. I don't believe there's not... I don't believe there's not been things you could discuss. Communication's a two-way street. When was the last time you called me? A slight smile crept onto Marduk's face. Fair enough. You have me there. That said, I'm calling you over now, am I not? You are. Given your history, I have to assume it's not just a social visit. So then, what are we here to discuss? Marduk sighed. You always were clever, weren't you? You're right. I'm here to talk to you about Lara. Lara. Blunt with you. What do you think of her? In what sense? Just give your general impressions of her. She is... competent. She has the approval of many Duat members, the disapproval of others. She does her job well enough. She doesn't understand the true purpose of the Duats. She has things backwards. Oh? How so? She believes the Duats should serve the city, not the other way around. Hmm. Marduk's eyes wandered to the ceiling. Do you agree with her? I don't know what I agree with anymore. The older I get, the more sentimental I begin to feel. What would you classify Laura's strengths as? Let's get to the chase. You're considering letting Laura succeed you for leading the Duats. Impatient as ever, I see. Fine. You are correct. It seems like an acceptable choice. Be clear I am not so shallow a leader as to be swayed by this recent display of wealth lucky break that says nothing. No, this decision of mine has been deliberated for some time. You might think I am foolish for not considering Yi. It's true, he's a talented, he's a talented individual. 
I've been lucky to have him by my side for all these years. His insight, wisdom, and diligence is a large part of our continued success. However, his talents are not suited for the role of a Duat head. His, dis his disposition is more managerial. To be the Duat head, you have to be a leader. This, knows this involves seeing the greater picture, being able to inspire your men, knowing what wars to fight. Lara, despite being a relative newcomer to our organization and being in an environment prejudiced against her, has won the approval of the majority of my men. Ultimately, I'm not the one who really decides who will succeed me. The Duarts will follow whoever commands their respect. If the Duarts follow Lara, then in that, my eyes, that makes her the most worthy candidate. Is this decided? No, not quite. If it was, why would I be consulting with you? This was a tricky juncture. My understanding of Thane was correct, I knew exactly how he'd respond to the situation. However, if I was mistaken... No, there was no time to be second-guessing myself. I had gotten this far by believing in my skills. If the rational part of me thought this was the best course of action, then I should follow through on it. Consulting with me, huh? Come on, Marduk. That's not what this is. It isn't. Not really. After all, you should know damn well how I'd react to this news. You should know I'd never willingly rescind that which, which by all rights, should be mine. Marduk just, look, Marduk just looked at me for a while. There was something sad in his eyes. And then, then he looked over to the window in his office. How did it come to this? I have an idea. Yeah. Yeah, so do I. Marduk turned back to look at me. Look, Thane. No, that's not right. Vidar. Finally on a first name basis, are we? Look it. You know, the last thing I wanted was for things to come to this. Do you realize how difficult putting you in that mask was for me? Didn't feel particularly difficult at the time. Because I thought it was for the best. It was for the best. You needed to learn a lesson. But you know, I always intended for you to eventually inherit the Duats. Is Thane, Vidar, Marduk's son? Your, like, biological son? I still intend that, and yet you're handing it off to Lara. She has earned it. But her time shall pass. You're young, younger than most in the Duats. Yet you're already a senior officer. Give it a bit more time, and you certainly you shall be given the chance to fulfill your destiny. You simply need to wait. Learn a lesson? Yes. <laughs> Rich, then. Once in my life I was trying to live up to your expectations. Follow your rules. See the bigger picture. To control by myself. Rule with force. That's not. But excite once more. It's as though this conversation was just taking a toll on him. I can appreciate your intent. But intent is not the only thing that matters. The consequences, the methods, those are also important. But da, you paid no mind to either. Oh, I paid both mind, all right. This is a different idea of what Panthea should be. I guess I have a different idea. But Dar, listen. Do what's have their place in Panthea? An important one, one that I've explained many times. But it's a defined place. There are sections of the city we simply shouldn't go can't go. By our nature, we must exist in the shadows. Track out too far, and those in power will, power will no longer tolerate us. They spend centuries building the hierarchy that currently exists. Do you really think they would allow it to be toppled so easily? It sounds to me like you don't have the strength to achieve true dominance. Against what, ex against what exists? Nobody does. Instead, instead, I make inroads where I can, concessions where I must. Be clear, if I had it my way, we'd storm the entire city, knocking out the windows of every government building and corporate office. We have to be realistic. This underground monopoly we have accrued is the best we can hope for. And to keep it, there is a balance in place. One that Aisha helps maintain. When you went off on your own with Gil, planning that whole assassination business, you almost undid that very precious balance. Nothing knows what would have happened if we had we not passed along the information to our police contact in time. Because of your half-baked half scheme, Gil still rots in prison. 
managing our jailhouse division. Oh. Comparison, I'd say you got off light. Hmm, I understand your ambition, but going after Aisha was a step too far. If that worked, you'd have severely provoked the chief of police. Make do with our methods, but the real reason we've been able to thrive is because the police force has decided not to crack down on us. But they've tacitly accepted that our monopoly keeps us the that keeps the peace is a better alternative to the gang warfare that used to cover the streets in blood. The moment we begin assassinating politicians is the moment that grace is snatched away. That would have been useful information to have at the time. Instead, you keep all the cards close to your chest. You claim to lead the Duats. Leading means giving an, us a unified vision, not making your own decisions and telling us how to act them out. Hmm. Yes, you might have a point there. Do you see why your plot could not be tolerated? Why you had to bear the risks and responsibilities that come with a Thane mantle? Sure. Can't understand that. Can't understand is why you did what you did before passing me the mask. I wish I could understand it as well. Try. But this murder could only hang his head. A small part of me worried that I was a bit worried if I was pushing too hard. At this point, I had lost myself in the character, in the mindset of Thane, or rather, Vidar. I should only continue in this direction and see where it led me. After a moment, Mardin looked back at me. Vidar, you might not understand this, but to me the Duats are my legacy. Not just the Duats. You, too, are my legacy. Naturally, I always assumed you would follow in my footsteps. A bit monarchistic, sure, but I was okay with that. So when you began acting out, misunderstanding what the Duat spirit was, it caught me to my soul. Maybe it was my fault in the first place. Looking back, you probably joined far too early. It would have been better if your teen years were spent normally. You joined the Duats after you became an adult. Still, I was just so angry that you couldn't follow simple directions. So when you pulled that assassination shit, putting the entire Duat family in jeopardy, it cost me one of my best senior officers. I was outside of myself with rage barely control myself. The knife was already in my hand, and... Look, there's no good excuse. It was what I did was over the line. Oh. Hell, it'd still be over the line if I did it to Yi or Lara. I don't know what to say. Apology might be a place to start. I never did apologize, huh? You're right. You're owed that. Sorry, Vidar. I truly am. Neither of us are good people, and both of us know that. I don't really need your forgiveness, not really. I just hope that you will grow from all of this. Without a word, I just nodded. Wow. What a touching moment. I shame his son is already dead. In the forest somewhere. Thank God I actually bullshitted my way through it. What I need to do now is begrudgingly accept Lars the next head. Ask him to delay making it official for a bit longer, and my work will be done. See, this is why we should talk more often. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Huh, you little shit. Can't give a straight answer if your life was on the line, huh? Fair enough. Roderick scratched his neck, then looked like he had an idea. That couldn't be good. Why don't you take off your mask so I can apologize to you face to face? You know, I've been talking with Thane this whole time. That's not right. I want to talk to Vidar. Ah, yep, here it comes. I don't understand. I understood, I just didn't want to. Hmm. <laughs> Take off the mask. She finished this conversation looking eye to eye. Welp. This was the risk in bringing this conversation to this topic. Should have been more cold. Now, how was I going to get out of this? Mordek may be old, but he was still a fighter. More to the point, behind me there was a room full of Duat members. The identity getting exposed here would be a death sentence. I prefer not to. Excuse me. Just feel more comfortable in the mask. Oh. Is it because of... I almost felt bad about this tactic. 
It was, it was sort of the only option I had available. Yes. That's not good. I'm sure it's not that bad. It really is. No, it's not. By the way, you should learn to live with it. If you could view it as a good thing, a mark of being a badass. There's nothing badass about it. Just take the mask off, would you? I held myself back from cursing. Really had the worst luck. Maybe I was lucky for Gage just for getting this far. Whatever. It was clear my time was up. I guess I had to put the backup plan into action. They didn't like the line of play. Definitely not what I intended. But life really confirmed, conformed to our expectations, or I heard rarer still our desires. If this, was, if this is how Marduk wanted to be, I only had one choice. To show my face. I slowly stood up from the couch. Bob began leaning forwards, closer to Marduk. Right hand rose. Gripped onto my mask. No, Thane's mask. Either hand casually felt my hip. I wasn't an idiot. Never enter enemy territory without a weapon. At this point I was gripping something with both my hands. I stood close to Marduk. More delay, I slowly, lift up, I slowly lifted up the mask. I could feel the air hitting my face. Just like that, I was unmasked. Locked eyes with Marduk. For a solitary second, he just looked at me, processing. The moment of shock was what I was counting on. Hmm? Grimace? Oh, hello! My left hand, gripping the knife I had brought, shot out into the air. Then it stabbed down, right at Marduk's heart. I expected a jolt on his part. Some reaction. I guess age caught us all. Not as much of a shift in his seat, the blade struck true and pierced the skin. It wasn't a good enough anatomy to know if I actually hit his heart. At the very least, however, I could tell that this was a mortal wound. Blood began to pour out of the gash. I kept the knife firmly in place, my fist clutching it. On the other hand, I proceeded I prepared to pro promptly cover Marduk's mouth and continue stabbing him if he decided to start shouting out for backup. Instead, however, he just looked at the knife down in his looked down at the knife in his chest. And he looked back to me. Huh. So that's how it ends. Then. It's my son. Yep. He was a Duat member through and through. I thought I'd been a murderous piece of shit. He tried to kill me. But he overestimated his skills somewhat. Him or me, you have to understand. Instead of responding to this, Marduk just looked down. There was a paleness to his face. That's that, then. You know, I always knew I'd die like this. I suspected it, at the very least. But I was fine with it. I made peace with my death a long time ago. One of... <coughs> the occupational risks of it all. I knew I'd accept death when it came. But Vidar... I was wrong. I shouldn't have kept him away from this until he was prepared. I should have kept him away from this period. I see the cruelest tragedy that can happen to a parent is to have their children die before them. In that case, maybe the humane thing would be would have been just to stab you with a mask on. You probably prefer to think that Vidar was killing you. Good thing then that I took the mask off. Marduk looked back up at me with a new anger in his eye. She must be the rat that's been running around, making a mess of this city. So you heard of me? That I did. You know you're not going to get off easy when they catch you. Murdering the Duat head. That's not grounds for an execution. That's... <coughs> grounds for a torturous end. Yeah, you thugs should like your torture, huh? Your son sure was good at it. Good thing the Duats won't catch me. Sure about that. <laughs> there are more dangerous figures than you in the city. Dangerous figures than me. Trust me, the one thing that grants me peace in this death is knowing that your days are numbered. Not right. I've been doing pretty well up until now. It's just a matter of time before you roll poorly. Not a matter of chance. You really are naive, aren't you? 
Everything in life, even skill-based things, you're betting on yourself. Betting on your ability to not to make a mistake. Slip up. Nobody's a robot. Everybody, no matter how methodical, is prone to errors that could only be described as chance. That's why I know your death is inevitable. Because there's a chance you'll screw up, and you're not the type to stop. A chance happens enough times, it's not a chance. It's inevitability. Hmm. Believe me, I'm the last person you need to be advising about gambling. That right. Well, then, want to hear some advice I'm sure you need to hear. Not particularly. <laughs> that I pulled. Ooh, I pulled the knife out from Marduk. Slashed it across his throat. Began hacking, blood pouring out of his throat. In a few seconds, he went limp. That was that. I had killed Marduk. I took a few steps back, looking over my work. Well, then. This certainly wasn't how I envisioned handling this. I'd be bringing Marduk down, but to stab him with my own two hands. It was fine. At this point, I didn't even feel guilty. It was a dangerous gang leader. It was practically self-defense. Yeah, that practically. The only disturbing point was how much I enjoyed the process. You're a killer now, Mercury. That's probably not good. I'd worry about that later. Now I need to consider my next action. Staying in the room of Marduk's dead body, after all. What to do? Looked over the window. It's a bit difficult from this side, but it should open. Maybe I could escape through there. After a bit of consideration, I decided against this option. If Thane didn't exit the room before too long, people would begin to get antsy. They might check this office and find Marduk dead. That happened too soon. That could get in the way of things. Alternatately, there was a much simpler option. I left the door. Back through the way I came from, there'd be nothing odd about that. People didn't like to bother Marduk. There's no telling when someone would go and check on him. If my method of escape decided, I began covering my tracks. I left the knife on the couch Marduk sat on. I put the mask back on. I grabbed a pillow and used it to wipe, a, used to wipe off as much of the blood from my outfit as I could. Then I placed it back and turned around. That was probably as good as I'd get it. Without a final look back to the corpse, I walked over to the door and left Moduk's office. That's it, then. And I walked off across the V-Hall, hoping nobody would call me over before anything else. Hoping nobody would notice the flecks of blood I hadn't completely managed to wipe away. Luckily, it appeared that every as though everyone was thoroughly absorbed in their own machinations. I was able to get across the building and out the exit with nobody batting an eye. There it was. Marduk dead. Not the plan for today, but I just have to work with it. I thought back to Thane. The real Thane. Or Vidar, as it were. Arguing through his eyes had made me look at his case in a way I hadn't before. Thinking about it, wasn't a little sad. I mean, he died in his early twenties, if that. Most of his life he spent in the Duats, raised by a monster of a father who permanently scarred his own son. Is it really any wonder that he ended up how it, how he was? Was that scarring described at any point before this? Because that would have been a neat ground... That would have been a nice groundwork to lay if they hadn't... done that before now. And like Mercury's story... When we killed Thane, removed his helmet. Nope. No, no matter how much I tried, I just couldn't get there. Couldn't find myself being sorry for the demented son of a gang leader. Oh well. Not like my sympathy one way or another would change things. What was I had now killed both father and son? There would surely be fallout from this. But for now at least one serpent had been slain. On to the next one. Bye bye, Marduk. Oh my little sad to see him go out like that. He seemed like my type. But hey, it had to be done. Unintentionally or not, he had caught our Thane right in their tracks. Hey, speaking of, there's been three scenes. I'm gonna check back in that little bet between us. I don't remember how we bet it in this one. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky case, I must admit. But even still, I am going to count what just happened as Marduk discovering Thane's true identity. I mean, he did die shortly after. But hey, nobody specified that, that this, the discoverer had to be alive. And yet, it was less discovering the identity and more Thane revealing themselves. But it still counts, damn it. Marduk was moments away from discovering it on his own before Thane had to pull that bullshit reveal move. 
jumping off the map to prevent your opponent from getting a kill is a coward's move, and I shan't abide it. Which means... You win! Down to the wire, huh? Be grateful I ruled in your favor there. Not always so generous. But in this case... Yeah, yeah, sure. You won. Fair and square. But all that is in the past. We're beyond betting. We're in the end game. Our dearest Thane, whoever they may be, is racking up quite the kill count. Vidar, Milo, Gani, Marduk. Fortified murderer. For what? What has driven them so far? Survival, perhaps, to a certain extent. You could excuse a scene or two with that explanation. But at this point, it's clearly more than that. They're getting a taste for it. Something is driving Thane. It sure seemed like Marduk had an inkling of an idea. But since you already know about the whole, you know, Mercury thing, you probably also probably have a decent idea yourself. Though I'm guessing you still don't quite have the full story. But one way to find out. We just have to keep going. I'll be damned. Yeah. This is certainly a road that Mercury's not coming back from any time soon. Not for a long time, my friends. Not ever, really. In the Thane persona, Mercury has become... has developed a taste for blood. And that's not good. But hey, getting things done. And now that's... how does this reflect on... Mercury's personality. Okay. They, uh... In Vel's final story, where we see the end of the Duat subplot, we, uh... It is implied that, uh... The Devil the god of Panthea is the one that sends Krish to uh, Marduk's room and gets Krish framed for Marduk's murder. In uh, this still could be true. This also plants the possibility in my head that uh, this was realistically Mercury covering their tracks by framing their friend in another personality. Chase. So that's that. The final episode next time. This is also before we get into the end game. However, that leads us. David versus Aisha. Then. Yeah, at least we didn't get to see the uh, follow up. I suppose this is the follow up to uh, Laverna's story. The Laverna's story ends with uh, Laverna being interrupted by a, by a text from Yi. And Thane's final story starts with uh, Thane being annoyed at Thane having things to do and being called into an emergency meeting by Yi. So, that is essentially... But that can't be right. That No, that timeline doesn't work. Unless... Uh, no, that, that timeline doesn't work. Because... The Verna story is the aftermath of the raid on the uh, safe house and discovery of the dirty money, which is the plan that uh, Thane and Yi laid out in this Thane episode. So no, I'm not sure where this falls in the timeline. I'm not sure in the way this falls in the timeline whatsoever. That's annoying.
All I can really say for sure is that Mercury and Devon's final episodes are the, are the last two in the timeline. We have Le Bane's episode 7 is part 1 of the heist plan. Verna's episode 7 is part 2 of the heist plan. Locke's episode 7 is part 3 of the heist plan. Bane's uh, Bells' episode 7 is the uh, end of the Duat subplot, which happens after the heist plan. Eris' episode 7 is the end of the Limbo subplot, which... Uncertain, but... Maybe Bane went from killing Marduk to uh, handling the boardroom thing, and that's the appointment that Thane, that Thane had to get to. That is my theory. Should put the Olympo subplot before the th the heist. But okay. So, yep, that seems reasonable. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and we will discuss this further next time with uh, Devin's final episode and whatever comes after that point. So until then, until then.